What's up guys, welcome to new Unreal Engine 5 tutorial. Today I'm going to show you how to carry physical objects around. It's going to be a very easy video to follow, so let's get started. Alright, so first of all, let's create the actual physical object that we can pick up. And really, honestly, it can be even these boxes. But let's just make a new object just in case you want to make new ones. So, just in the content browser, just right click, go into blueprint class, and let's create a new actor. It's going to be a BP underscore, and then let's say like pickable... Uh, object or well, grabbable, like, I don't know how we can name it, but just pickable object. That will be good. So we can basically now just open this blueprint up. And here, what we're going to do is add a static mesh, basically the item model. And what we can do is choose one. In my case, let me just put, for example, the table. Okay. So in this tutorial, we're going to be picking up this table. Now, an important thing is to drag the model into the default scene root. This will basically make it the whole parent of the object itself. This is very important for the physics and so on, and origins and pivots and everything. And now, with this selected, let's go into simulate physics and enable this so it can basically move around, have a mass, and overall just physics. So now I can drag it into the scene, I can put a bit up. Now, if I press play, you can see it will fall, and now I can go and start pushing it around. So now let's make that we can actually grab this object. So for that, let's go into our third person folder go into blueprints and open a third person character blueprint of course this can be any character blueprint that you're using in first person or whatever it doesn't matter let's go down and let me use for example use the left mouse button it doesn't really matter you can use whatever key or input you want but in this case i'm just going to be making this so in this case i'm going to make a sphere trace by channel and this is a quick way of detecting what objects i have in front of me as simple as that so I can basically just get the start point to be our get actor location. So basically where we are right now and the end point to literally just be the same because the thing is that this is a sphere. So it will just be a radius around a point. Let's put this to around 200. I don't know we'll play with those settings later on. And now I can also change this to, for example, for duration. So I can preview this. If I now left click, you can see that I will be picking up any object that is around in this area. And if it's too big, we can drop it down maybe 120 so of course you can test what you want this will basically be perfect i think 120 is good for me so we can carry on we can also close the cool object we won't need it right now so with this we can just go and return value make a branch so basically if we have detected an object we can now continue in this case the out header will be basically will break it okay so we'll be now detecting this uh, all the objects for it now, the thing I want to do is actually instead of using a sphere trace by channel, there's another very similar node, which is the sphere uh, trace for objects. And basically, this is the same thing. But instead of looking for channels, which is basically like the collision settings, we can do so by making our search through object types. So we can literally just make an array over here and search through the physics body. So basically, if our um, object has physics, We'll be able to pick it up which will be more convenient so we can just hold control move it down hold control move it down hold control move it down put 120 put this in uh for duration delete this put it up and then plug it into the branch plug in the return value and break hit and overall it will just be better for us because we will at least start only pick up and detect the artist that has physics on not for example walls okay so now what we can do is add a special component that will enable us to pick up the objects and basically anchor it into our hands so in this case this will be the physical uh constraint physical constraint component this will allow us to basically attach things into each other in this case it will be the object that we have picked up into our chest zone or hands it doesn't really matter but basically around our character so what we can do is get a physical constraint drag it and say set constraints if I know how to type here set constraint component so we can now attach this into the true and then the component one will be basically the parent so what the component two will be attached to in this case it will be the mesh so we can just drag it on here now what we can do is pass a bone name in my case for our mesh if we search it over here and open out the skeleton we have a few bones in this case, to make it simple, I'm just going to attach it into the basically glide the chest. So later on, when we have our animation of pick it with the arms extended, it will be kind of here. So in this case, spine 5 will do my job. So let me copy the bone name. And again, it has to be exactly the same. 
and now plug it in here. So the name has to be exactly spelled like that. Now the component 2 will be the object that we'll be detecting. In this case, the hit component, and we're gonna just put it unknown because it will not have really bones. With that said, now if I press play, go into my table and left click, you can see that it will be anchored into me. But of course, it looks like a string, which actually the physical component uh, cannot act like that. But basically, we don't want we want it to be a bit more locked. So what we can do is go and edit the physics constraint components. And on here, we're gonna go down until we see the uh, angular limits. This is pretty much the rotation and so on. So what we can do is pass it in locked. Now the thing is, there's a problem we put it in locked. And overall, it won't look very good. If I now attach it, it will be like instantly snapped on. And honestly, it doesn't really good, look good. So what we can do is do an alternative that will be in the middle of both. So we can put it in limited and then lower the angle to around 10, let's say. So basically, it will have a bit of a wobble and so on and be like we are grabbing it, but not be exactly um, super attached. As you can see, this is much better. It's a small kind of transitioning and so on. We can even maybe expand a bit, maybe even 25 can be a, an option. So we can play with the settings, but that will pretty much work pretty good. So we can play with those settings over there. All right. So there are more things that we can touch, but for now, we'll go ahead and leave it like that. But we can touch more stuff. Now, there's still things, still things to go. And right now, we can, of course, grab a table and so on. But let's make the animations. So what we can do is go into characters and go into mannequins and go animations. In this case, because we have Quinn, let's go into Quinn. Now, here what we're going to do is get the idle animation and duplicate it. And this will be basically the carrying animation. Now, we can open this and basically edit it. So let's place our handle in the star here. Go into skeleton tree. If you don't see this window, you just go into window and then skeleton tree. And then I'm gonna go ahead and select my, where it's with a cloud go left. So basically, it's pretty much like the shoulder, right? So in here, what I can do is just get this axis. So in the rotator, I'm gonna be actually doing it in the local space. And it's basically rotate it around 70 degrees up, then move it 10 degrees into the inside and then another 10 degrees up so now here i can just press the key and now it will be snapped into here now i can do the same with my other arm so let's go down into my cloud cool right this time then again move it up around 70 degrees move it inside 10 degrees and then move it a bit up 10 degrees and now i can basically press the key button again very important now when i press play you can see that he'll be like holding something and also his hands move a bit like following the animation this is great now we can save close it and now we can just go back into our third person character and first of all let's make a boolean so basically is carrying so we're gonna make sure that we are carrying something in this case if we have selected something let's set the carrying to be in here true but if not let's set it to be basically false over here Great, so now let's go into our animations and open the ABP Manny. I know that we're using Queen, but basically Queen is a child for Manny, so we just have to change from one place. Now in the name graph, let's go here and let's go into main states. And the thing is that we're gonna be adding a new state. So I can just right click, add state, and this will be basically carrying. In here, I can just get the locomotion, drag an arrow, then drag it from carrying to locomotion back. And now here we're gonna do is just create a new variable. In this case, this will be is carrying to. So basically pretty much the exact boolean that we created before. So basically boolean will be true or false. So in here from locomotion to carrying in this left arrow, let's double click and just drag is carrying. So if it's true, it will transition. Now in the other one, it will be the opposite. So let's get is carrying and do a not boolean. So basically it's not true. So with that, we can go back over here and now we can open our state itself. In here, let's search for carrying, let's drag the animation and plug it here. And very important, let's select this and make sure that loop animation is on. Right now, nothing will happen, of course, because carrying is false. But if I were to try, uh, put it in, as you can see, he will be with the carrying animation. Make sure to set it false, of course. Now let's go into the event graph and let's add a new pane over here and get the, in reference, the character. In this case, let's just cast to our third person character or whatever character blueprint you're using and you did the logic. And then here what we can do is just get is carrying and then get the is carrying in our blueprint, animation blueprint, and then set it depending on this. So depending on what we have in our animation blueprint, it would do so. 
So now if I press play, I can go into here and I'll hold this and now you can see that has the animation going on. But there's a problem is that he's like standing still there. It doesn't look very good. His feet are not moving. So what we can do instead is go into our anim uh, blueprint, go into cami instead. And instead of directly just passing the animation, we can do a layered blend per bone. And this will basically split the body in two. I did already make multiple tutorials on this. Now, this will be very importantly the blend pose zero. So just hold control and move it down. And the blend pose one will be like the, the rest of the body, the lower part. And this gives the locomotion. So now in here, we can select this and open the layer setup here and add a member. This will be the bone that we want to split the body. In this case, we've got the skeleton. I want to split it around in spine two. So let me copy the name. Let's go back to animation blueprint and put it here. So basically from here, the body will be split in two. And for that, as you can see, when I press play and go and grab my thing, he will be playing the animations while I'm moving. There we go. Now let's make it that we can also go ahead and of course drop it when we stop holding. So let's go back into animation blueprint and in released, what we're going to do is basically set it's going to be false. Okay. And then also let's get the physics constraint and let's we'll say it's break constraint. So whatever we have attached, it will just break it. Okay. And with that, if we go ahead and grab it, now we have to hold it. So now while we're holding, we can move. But now when I, as soon as I uh, stop holding, you can see that his animation will go back to normal and the physics object will be replaced. Now there's a like few tweakings that we can do in order to basically uh, make his, let's say that this case is, uh, you know, this thing's secure less, let's say, right? So let's go here into the third person character. Let's go here and basically let's get the hit component and now set disable. Sorry, actually we can do it from the physics constraint. So just select this, go down and say disable collision. So whatever right now we have equipped, well basically grabbed, it will not have a collision, so those things will not happen. Like basically breaking a bit the character movement, which is very important. So another thing that we can do is just decrease a bit the radius. Maybe instead of uh, 120, we can maybe put it at literally 70. So the thing is that the object will stay at which distance you grabbed it. So if I grab it very uh, soon, very close, it will be more close to the hands or not. So you can play with the distance in order to grab it from where you want, okay? It will not always, always be perfect. But as you can see, I can grab literally any object that I want. This is very, very, very cool. You can really play around with these settings. And actually, two more things I'm going to do is change the bone name to, instead of being the spine, I found that the neck will work a bit better, so we can copy the bone and put it here. It's just a bit uh, up, so it will not touch too much the ground. And also let's go into hit a component and then set the collision. So in this case, instead of being the normal collision that it will have, we'll put it into physics only. And now it will be way smoother. So that's it guys. If you found this so helpful, I really appreciate you like the video and subscribe to my channel. Lots of Unreal Engine 5 tutorials, so check them out. Remember that the private files will be available in my Patreon and YouTube members. So check it out through the link in the description. Join my Discord server, follow me on all my socials. Now yes, we'll all said bye bye.